Oh, hello there, Philadelphia. <laughs> Didn't see you come in. I'm Vince Quinn here, reading a book by the fireside. John Barchard at home. Hi, John. Literally trying to start a fire in my fake woods here, I think. So we have, we're on the same page. I like that. Hi, everybody. Hi, bird brains. How you doing, pal? You you excited? All this so much fun news, John. This has been like we we got together this morning. I mean, we always get together on a Tuesday usually to, to do all this. But holy shit, dude! There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of stuff, and there's a lot of stuff that the Eagles try to sneak past us on Wednesday. Which yes, of course, I'm going to talk about Shane Steichen today. Yes, of course. But but uh, speaking of a lot of news, yeah. Uh, so uh, not not such a great injury for CJ, huh? <laughs> dude, Yikes. yeah. Lacerated kidney sounds awful. I mean, just awful. It's a it's a major organ, you know. Like you, I know you have two of them, but still, it's a major <laughs> organ. Uh, you, you, it's not what it, like people have been put in bathtubs and had one removed forcibly for money on the black market, right? Like that's if that's not the definition of a valuable organ, I don't know what is, John. Now you know what uh, Vince kind of like studies at night, or I guess for pleasure reads about. So there you go, stolen. No, now you know how I pay the your bills. Your kidney, CJ. So... Vince Quinn is at your house. Watch your kidney. Sir, That's right. I just want to point that out. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and just to give you a love, like I've never had a kidney injury, and hopefully we don't we don't have any. But uh, uh, some people were in our mentions. Go ahead and follow us at Bell and the Bird on the Twitter.com or Instagram, wherever whatever you feel. Uh, the uh, one uh, one person said he got it at the age of twelve and didn't notice any pain after you know it was diagnosed. And another person said it's like uh, have, passing a billion kidney stones or whatever it is. So oh, I can't imagine that it's. God. Uh, feeling good uh, especially to get hit by a football helmet and cracked ribs on top of that too right it's not just like <laughs> the ribs yeah, there's got to be damage the kidney and uh, unfortunately that's going to take a while so right what it's, do you think it's not like a it's not a magic bullet thing where it's like around the ribs and into the kidney and bam like it just you know so yeah like he's got to have cracked ribs to go with that it just absolutely sucks i mean i've heard with cracked ribs how awful that is just the breathing and everything that goes into that so yeah uh kidney problems rib problems it all sucks and we figured this was coming because you see the Instagram post and it's like, hey, well, I'm going to get back at it, which is like, well, shit, he's not back in a week if he's posting that. Yep. So, uh, yeah, everybody was putting like prayer hands and all, all the all the different players were applying to it. So you knew it was bad. Now it is bad. But it could be good, John. It could be good. A another situation where an injury leads to something good here, because if you missed it, folks, Johnny Airport himself, John Clark, had Malcolm Jenkins on his show and Malcolm Jenkins is like. Howie, hi, Howie, I'm here, <laughs> I can play, I'm retired, but I'm not retired, call me up, I'd love to come back, so, uh, yeah, two Super Bowls with Malcolm Jenkins, John, you in? First of all, yes, and if Howie Roseman's in, I will be shocked to the guilts, I, like, do you remember how that ended? It ended not great, like, Malcolm was talking shit on the way out, so, you know, maybe it was just some Zach Ertz type of talking shit, you know, like, it's the end of an era, and everybody kind of knows that, and, like, bygones are bygones and now we need a third or four safety so from that if howie does this i would kiss his forehead because that would be great that'd be fantastic i would love the guy that you know you kicked out carson wentz for to come back maybe to help out some like a reed blankenship or you know he was already talking up marcus epps before the offseason so yes uh and the one thing where i go like well maybe i'm wrong is I mean, you did try to bring in Jaqueski Tart and freaking, you know, Anthony Harris to a one-year deal for third or four safeties. Kayvon did okay. I'm not saying he didn't do okay, but it, I, I'd kind of like to have Malcolm here. He did play with CJ too, right, with, with the Saints. So, I'm sure, they have the chemistry. I'd be on board with it. Yeah, it makes all the sense in the world. He's Malcolm fucking Jenkins, man. The guy's good. He's, it's just and – for, and for this team, it's the same things with 2017, right? It's the chemistry, the leadership – all that kind of stuff that you're going to get. Most of the team is familiar with this guy, likes this guy, respects this guy. So to bring him back, it, it makes so much sense. And, and you touched on it for me because uh, the, the big point for me with all of this is if Carson Wentz is here, this is not a conversation. This is not possible. This is not happening. They don't like each other. Like, it's a, there was a divide. They had to pick one guy. They went with the quarterback, which is the right move at the time. If you're going to pick a quarterback or an yeah. aging safety, you pick the quarterback. But holy shit, the quarterback, what a dead horse that turned out to be. Uh, it checked the Colts. Bam. Now, uh, <laughs> so with all that stuff happening, it's like, okay, well, now Wentz is gone. You're winning a ton of games. So you're the front runner in the NFC. Mm -hmm. And this is what the rich teams do, right? They get richer. You can get Ndamukong Sue. Because you're you've got this kind of you've got this kind of positioning, you know. So if they wanted OBJ, which all the reporting seems to be that they don't, 
and it makes sense now that Quez is blowing up. Uh, I'd rather have OBJ, but I get it a little bit more now. So, like, yeah, okay, you're not going to make that move. But Malcolm Jenkins wants to be here because he could win here. He's looking again and going, shit, I can win another Super Bowl in Philadelphia and play with all those guys again? Are you kidding me? And it's, yeah. it, it's such an easy move. But it, it, none of this happens with Carson Wentz still on this team. And I'm only laughing when Vince Quinn says the rich get richer because that was that was that was a phrase I used in sarcasm for the Dallas Cowboys all the time because they always said, "Oh, look at who we signed," and I'm like, "Yeah, well, you still then they missed the playoffs with that player." Speaking of which, too, and I, I what you said is dead on, just because it's been it's been circulating for a couple of days and we haven't touched on it. Robert Quinn's not existent. What's the deal? I figured it was because they weren't up enough. And for three games in a row, maybe they just weren't up enough. Uh, but, like, you would figure at some point, it was going through my head during that game, like, when Jordan Love comes out, why wouldn't you throw a fast pass rusher out there at least for a snap or two? Goose, like, he has been non-existent since the trade. This is worse than Golden Tate. Uh, if you can remember that too, you know, it's just like, this is bad. Those discussions have been going on our discord. Feel free to jump in there too, because you guys are putting out a ton of great ideas, by the way, turbo Mike doing a great job uh, as a beat reporter, as always bell and the birdman.com. But what is your take on Robert Quinn? I don't, I think Howie made a mistake. <laughs> yeah. What the hell happened? Like what? I, I guess my main question is what has he done or what did he do in Chicago before they traded for him? Cause like, look, not I'm not lot. watching it. I'm not watching a ton of bears games for what? For, for what reason in my life, with, with time being a precious element in all of our lives, why am I watching the Chicago Bears outside of Justin Fields' highlights? So, I, I mean, what, did they watch it? Were they just like, well, it's the Bears and they suck. It'll be better here. I mean, he had 18 sacks last year as a Bear, right? So, let's just like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how a guy falls off a cliff like this. Uh, it's it's really disturbing. Now, you've only traded a fourth-round pick to get him, and you have depth in other places. Like, that's the nice thing here. He's not the savior. He was a luxury depth piece, so you can survive this. Uh, Golden Tate was a little more essential because the offense sucked that year. Yeah. I mean, they, they really needed him to perform, but same thing. Like, Golden Tate was a good player for a very long time, multiple thousand-yard seasons, did it in Detroit, did it in Seattle. You bring him in here, you think he's going to be fine, and it just poof, right off the cliff. So, like... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know quite why he sucks. I don't know if it's a Gannon thing, which it shouldn't be. I don't be think it's a Gannon thing, right? I, this is not be. a Gannon thing. If if they needed the uh, the help at defensive tackle, and they probably don't need it as much as pass rush, I'll give them that. But between, like, Hassan's doing really well. Josh Sweat's been doing pretty good. Uh, Brandon Graham, you keep hyping up, and rightfully so. Um, I think that's a part of it. I, don't, I just think he's not good enough to replace those guys, and that's what scares me. And Dominic and Sue and now Lindell Joseph have come right in in back-to-back -back games off the street, have had no problem with terminology or what they're supposed to do. And maybe it is a Gannon thing because he likes his DNs to drop into coverage like once in a blue moon. <laughs> and Robert <laughs> and so Quinn has done that. Yeah, past. and he has. So um, maybe there's a little bit more of a learning curve. Uh, and, and I'll grant him that. It's possible that they're just saving him up for the playoffs and like, why get another guy dinged up when everybody's relatively healthy and doing okay? But uh, to me, that's bad news bears. Like someone's not picking up something. And speaking of which, it's crazy. Lindell Joseph has now, I thought he was just going to slowly, you know, descend into like a, 30% of the snaps, equal amount of snaps between him, between uh, Hargrave and Cox this last game. Good. All 30, 30, 30. <laughs> Good. That's what it should be. That's the whole point of all of this, right? A lot of these guys are older. You should rotate them. They'll be fresher. That's the whole point of the philosophy. Yep. That's why Jim Schwartz did all of that, right? It was the idea of, like, let's keep these guys fresh, and you can keep sending speed, and we want these guys to be really aggressive and rushing the passer, so rotating them is best. And then it was like, yeah, let's play the guy that's 31, and we've had questions about him being in shape for a couple of years. Let's play him for 70 snaps and just see what the fuck happens. Like, come on, man. So, well, there yeah. was no one else. To be fair, there was no one else there. That's it. You know, you lose two. That's what we talked about. Plus, we're, on Thursday, we'll deep dive into Jordan Davis because, ooh, baby, we got a big one coming up against the Titans and all that well, yeah. fun stuff. But, yeah. yeah. But you um, could distribute it more with, with Hargrave and all that. They could have done it in, in that week. But – Anyway, You're probably right. I mean, you, you got all this talent. So, like, yeah, the, the fact that Robert Quinn sucks, sucks. Uh, it's it's clearly a problem. Is it a catastrophe? No. 
And who knows? There's no reason to say he's completely cooked and it's totally over and he won't do anything this year. So maybe it is an adjustment period. Maybe he's got a nagging injury we don't know about. That happens a lot. I mean, look, Aaron Rodgers wasn't on the injury report for, like, the whole season. It's like, oh, by the way, I've had a broken thumb this whole time and I probably need surgery and I just haven't told anybody about it. So, like, all that kind of stuff's hidden, too. So maybe he's dealing with something like that we don't know about. I don't know. But... Uh, the fact that he comes in, there was all this expectation. He's not getting many snaps even to begin with, so he probably doesn't look good in practice either. It's a pretty yeah. bad sign, and this this was probably a mistake. But you know what? Look, even if he sucks ass the rest of the year, and and he is a, a Ryan Kerrigan, which Ryan Kerrigan had like two tackles all season last year. I mean, he was phenomenally bad. Um, if, if he does something... Your boy, like, by I, the way. <laughs> Your yeah, boy, I, Ryan Kerrigan, was yeah, bad yeah, last year. Yeah, yeah I, I don't want to talk about it. But... Uh, but, but Look, you have to make moves like this. Even if, if it doesn't work out, you, like, you don't know that in the moment. That's the whole reason you make the trade. Otherwise, you like, there's no point in any of this. If you knew the future, it's all dumb. I hate that stuff. So it's like, <laughs> oh, they shouldn't have made it. Yeah, well, yeah. no fucking shit they shouldn't have made it because it didn't work. But, like, you don't know. You have to take a chance on a guy that, that was a first-round pick, played well his entire career. He's done it in a bunch of different cities, different coaches. It doesn't matter. He's always been a good player, and and you decided to add a good player to your team for a fair price. It's like these moves work sometimes, and sometimes they don't. Michael Bennett was a fifth-round pick, wasn't he? Yep. I mean, holy shit, what a great move he was if they didn't think he was an asshole and didn't want him around anymore. But, no. like, that guy, he was – I mean, he was playing in the middle. He was playing on the edge, and he was really good. Uh, just in terms of production, he was really good. So uh, people, like, you can you can second-guess the move if you want, but sometimes you swing and you miss, and I'm glad they're swinging rather than going out looking, you know? Well, so I, I think this is just Howie with his, you know, both six shooters, and he's going, bah, 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 I'm hitting everything, I'm hitting everything, we need this, bah, 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 oop, that's a blank, bah, 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 you know, like, <laughs> we just kind of pass by it because there's so many other good things that have happened here, too, and. So much so I just, you know, knocked over a plastic pineapple, which is very exciting around this house. But, like, um, uh, more on that later uh, in the future. But the uh, – I, I just – I think that's a big part of it. Um, and I have no optimism that it's going to work out. I mean, look at this. We're, we, we're bitching about, like, what – Where's Derek Barnett and his production? Like, you need to find something better than zero, and, like, we're still at zero. So it's just like, well, Taylor's shit. favorite guy, Derek Barnett, R.I.P. <laughs> I know Taylor uh, hasn't forgotten about him uh, at all. And I, this is, well, this is my next question. And thanks to our friends always at liquidat.com slash bell. Um, Taylor saying in the chat, bring, bring Derek Barnett back as soon as possible. Couldn't agree more, buddy. Um, liquidat.com slash bell to locate all the delicious 16.9 ounce cans that you could be drinking, murdering your thirst. Um, my local 7-Eleven, which I'm going to walk to right after this show and just, you know, take a nice little chilly walk with my daughter because uh, she's already on board, if you can believe that. Yes, it is that that cool that I put liquid death in her, you know, baby cup. People get freaked out by it. And I'm just telling everybody it's the purest water that I could feed her. So uh, we like taking trips down to 7-Eleven. Hope uh, you do too. By the way, 7-Eleven making a strong comeback. By the way. I just keep preaching it. I know we're hung up on Wawa. Uh, Wawa does not um, have any liquid death in it, which is why I don't go there. I am starting to tremble into sheets because me, Taylor, and Vince are like mapping out, you know, next year's where we go and we're doing some fun union stuff. I need to know where Liquid Death is at at all times. So should you. LiquidDeath.com slash bell. And man, oh man, keep harping on this coaching shit, Vince Quinn. I keep harping on it. And I wonder if it's just, you know, I started to slowly float because of our Discord and because of some really good tweets, I'm starting to flow like, like John's overreacting, especially after the post-game show. Everybody's thinking I'm a wet rag here, and I agree part of that was being a wet rag. I think it's opponent. Yep. I'm very excited to get to the Tennessee Titans. And then what comes across in the last two days, these sons of bitches think that I'm not going to notice this shit and just kind of, oh, nope, coaching staff is just fine. So first and foremost, I want to reemphasize this. The Philadelphia Eagles, Tim McManus, my boy, we got to get him on to talk about this too because maybe I'm just – a little too crazy about this, but they hire Marcus Brady, the former offensive coordinator of the Colts. Then uh, you don't think too much of it. You go, okay. And there's a really, really, really absurd quote about he's just here to help out Jonathan Gannon, like self scout his defense and see what he sees. Okay. One might be able to buy that. Then thanks to our uh, good friends on the twitter.com again, follow us over there at Bell and the Bird today from NJ.com. 
there is the first rumor for Shane Steichen and a coaching opportunity. And do you know where it is, Vince Quinn? Do you know where it could be? Yeah, John, it's the powerhouse that everybody vies for, UNLV. I mean, <laughs> sure. So a 10-1 coach on an offensive in an offensive coordinator position. Normally, what is happening right now? Who the Shane Steichen baby when he gets into the coaching cycle in the NFL like crazy? There's going to be people talking left and right. Right now, there are so many coaching positions that are wide open, and the first major rumor that comes out is UNLV after Matt Rule has been hired by Nebraska, a major program. After everything has just been sitting down in there taylor cordatus excellent point colorado hasn't even mentioned his name they've mentioned Deion sanders before then too and the most sniff that shane steichen can get after marcus brady gets hired on a wednesday is unlv and it just happens to come out almost simultaneously with this story something stinks and guess what it's still shane steichen i can feel it because this is how you shadow ban howie you're doing it he is shadow banning this man and we're going to have a new fancy offensive coordinator soon your thoughts vince quinn well, yeah, I, first off, this is why the football world in a lot of ways is better than the corporate world. Like, the corporate world can be fucking brutal because it's like, oh, Dave got promoted to manager. Dave sucks at manager, but <laughs> there's, like, he's just been promoted up, and, 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 like, all you can do unless he's so fireable is just promote them somewhere else and move them somewhere else, but they're still in the company. Like, if you're a football team, you could just go, hmm, I wonder if we can get this guy the head coaching job somewhere else. And, you know, I wonder if he could be the offensive coordinator in another place. It's a promotion. It makes us look good, but they're gone, and we're actually happier about that. We can't fire them, or we don't want to fire them because of the politics. Like, it is messy from the Eagles' side to fire a guy that's a 10-1 and offensive coordinator. Like, if this is the number one seed in the NFC and they win, I don't know, 15 games and they go 15 and two, like I said before the season, if they end up doing that. Without and, uh, Russell they, Wilson. Yeah, well, hey, hey, you win some, you lose some. Mr. Hassan Reddick is going to suck here, and I can't see why they made that move. All because right. Jordan bang, Davis bang. wasn't here, and neither was AJ. So in context, I was still right. Anyway, continue. All right, and uh, Pete Carroll buried the bodies in a way that I wasn't aware of, and I'm still right then. Uh, so anyway. But yeah, like if you're if you're looking at this, you can't fire Steichen. It just looks bad unless this team absolutely blows the way they did in Tampa in the playoffs, like last year. If they had something like that, maybe you can argue it. But otherwise, why did it's really it blow? Alive. Who is in charge of it? Hmm? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean, Nick's, Nick? Uh, was Russell Wilson in charge of that too? Are oh no! I, th oh, I thought you were talking about uh, the the playoff game from Tampa last year when the, they're sticking ten in the box, and you're like, "Yeah, we're just going to run." <laughs> oh well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's it's, what yeah, I mean Steichen. too. So if they, yeah. if Steichen has something like that again, if the offense does that again, and Shane's like, "What the fuck, man? This is what, wasn't what we were supposed to do." Then yeah, I mean, you could fire him then, but it's still a weird look, especially when he's young and whatever. So uh, to be able to get him the UNLV, apparently, I, and I was reading up on this when they when the report came out he played quarterback there so ah. yeah so that's and that's so the, part of it. he had to go back to his alma mater <laughs> or he wants to he wants to go to his alma mater as a head or coach maybe he's Bullshit. trying to scare up a market because if, yeah. if nobody else is interested in him as a head coach and this is his way of building buzz is going hey unlv can you put me in the conversation and give me an interview because i'm trying to boost my stock and get somewhere else maybe that's what he's trying to do but again it's a guy that in a league where Jeff Saturday becomes a head fucking coach overnight. Great clock uh, management last night, by the way. Yeah, Fantastic awful. Fantastic job. Awful. Uh, so he's when you've got guys like that, you have, but everybody else normally, I mean, Kevin O'Connell, Mike McDaniel this year, those are the guys. Like, as everything moves in that direction, for him to not get buzz and have to fight to get that attention on a 10 and 1 team, if that's what he's doing, again, a really bad look. A really yeah. bad look. I, I, I just think this drives home. I'm taking the tinfoil off now, man. We've been pretty good about the tinfoils coming into like real on theories and then like getting pretty close. So I think I'm right on this. I think they hate Shane and that's why. You you remember when I said that Arizona game, they, he just looked tired and it didn't really work out okay offensively. Something happened. Like I think it is way and you've even said this what's been the storyline this entire week stoutland university it was stoutland university last year too so like what is shane actually bringing to the wrinkle and fold and this is why i gotta commend the philadelphia eagles and especially howie roseman again after just you know criticizing that short little blank with blank with uh uh with robert quinn there by the way i still got to get you that jersey i can't believe it hasn't come in yet uh the um 
do you know what's crazy and why you should never bet against the Philadelphia Eagles in a second year head coach? Why? They've never missed. They've never fucking missed since Jeffrey Lurie has been here. Every time, year one to year two, has always been better by the record. They make the playoffs the next year. I remember Jeffrey Lurie saying this when he fired Chip Kelly. It's because it's the only time. Well, I mean, like, it's not actually why, but he went on to say, you know, the win-loss thing is is the most obvious, you know, resume for any coach. And if they don't feel like you can bounce back into that second year, they're out. And what did they learn from Doug Peterson? That, like, if you go that route, and again, I'm just going to bring up the veteran presence that he had, including Frank Reich and all those other guys. That's a strong unit. That's not happening here. You know, they have left this off. In my opinion, they've left this offensive coordinator position to be the anti Doug from what has gone on. Like Nick is not a guy that is going to pound the table in terms of this is my philosophy. This is the coaches I need to go and do it. Marcus Brady might change all that. He might have won a little power in there, but I, I highly doubt it. These guys have controlled on the field a lot more than I think they've given credit for over since 2013 and that whole thing happened. And yeah, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but man, they really have been able to control whoever's coming in here, kind of just let them do their thing, uh, control the entire roster while doing so. And now I think they're sitting up into the next phase. I still have not forgotten and show, shout out to the discord and I forget who it is, whoever the, uh, is married to Joe Brady, the sister-in-law or whatever it is. Tell them that there is a keg waiting for him still. This, to me, is a sign that they are open to having anybody come in there. His name is still out there. That's an impressive resume in what he's done. It's clear that Matt Rule is an idiot and couldn't handle like what was going on here. So I would like to see Joe Brady in here along with Marcus. Let's bring all the Bradys. Let's get Marcus. Let's get Joe. Let's get some inventive guys that can get around Jalen Hurts, AJ, and you know Dallas, and be like, we can make these guys go a lot better if you give us an opportunity. And I think that's th what this does. This might just be a little simple, Jim Bob Cooter. We need some. We need fresh eyes on this, but I highly doubt it. And I'm just excited that we're going to be right here, and Shane won't be here next year. No matter what, Shane will not be in the Philadelphia Eagles building. That's my that's my ultimate prediction. Yeah, I'm I'm good with that. I, look, on some level, he feels like, and, and you mentioned this too with Stalin, it feels like a useless appendage. You know, it's just like you you don't need him. If if his whole thing is the run game and everything that goes into it, then you have Stoutland and he's the run game coordinator and the passing offense needs work. So you need a guy to develop that passing offense. Now, maybe that's on Sirianni. Uh, I mean, look, he's he's a wide receivers coach. That was his calling card. He played wide receiver. So if all those things are supposed to be, hey, you, you got to figure out the passing game, then, then Sirianni damn well better figure out the passing game. Or if he can't do it, he's got to hire somebody to be the OC to Ken because the running game is fine. And, and you get away with that because of Stoutland anyway because – all these guys are freak athletes, man. I mean, we have, we have Kelsey. He's a 35-year-old center that pulls and blocks down the field. Like, to, to have a guy that moves like that and dominates like that is crazy. You get all these big tackles that can run around the same way. I mean, they'll, they'll go across the formation. Like, you'll see Jordan Mailata, like, swing around. You're like, holy shit, he's doing what? <laughs> so, so that mobility is unbelievable, and it makes it easier to scheme up all these exotic things in the run game that way. But... The passing game is not there with all the talent. We talk about it all the time. I think that's the obvious thing that people want to see, whether it's people that don't understand why Jalen's good or people that don't feel great about this team as a Super Bowl contender or whatever it is. You want to see the passing game get better, and Shane Steichen ain't helping you do that right now. Well, and I know why. I know one person who doesn't think Jalen Hurts is going to be good, and that's Vince Quinn. We're going to get into that in one second because I got to tell you, I have heard some things from Put that man over the couple of mouth. days. It's just unbelievable. But just want to remind you, if you're seeing, he is pretty. So I, we, we allow him to get away with stuff like this. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why he's pretty, because our good friend uh, Nick over at Forbidden Canvas gave us this sweet ass, I'd rather be watching the birds corduroy hats, which I have not taken off since we gotten them. It is bumped off Lord Brunson's Hurt season hat, which is just as phenomenal. And I'm not shitting you, but it's been hanging up ever since we got these because they're so comfortable, so beautiful. Uh, and these shirts too. I, I can't believe the support we have gotten for this entire program. And you guys are leaving such great messages on our text line and our discord on Twitter. It's really keeping us going in this holiday season. We want to appreciate that too. Bell and the Birdman shirts also available. Bell and the Birdman.com. Uh, one of the best ways you can help the pod and Vince Quinn. What the fuck, man? I brought up on the last post game show that Jeff McLean, your boy, um, mm -hmm. 
is mentioning that they're going to get around a price tag for $50 million with Jalen Hurts this offseason because that's what the market's going to probably bubble up to. I've said my piece on this, and you said something to me that I'm, it's been racking my brain for two days. It scares the hell out of me. After you just have been explaining and describing Jalen Hurts is literally the thing that moves the offense, the success, the failure, it's pretty much stacked on him, and he's 10 and fucking one. What makes you scared about $50 million a year? Well, it's what the teams look like when he's making $50 million a year. It's a different looking team. It just is. Like, that's that's the problem that happens. And, and th this is the thing, right? Rookie quarterback contracts are the most valuable thing. You want to win in those windows regardless of who it is. When all these guys get paid, and again, like, the only exception to the rule is Tom Brady, who does not count because his contracts were not in line with everybody else. But it is so much harder for a guy that's making top-of-the-line money to win the Super Bowl because your roster just isn't as good. And for Jalen to play as well as he is right now, he's got the ideal conditions everywhere. Like, what does it look like when this team's got $50 million tied up into Jalen Hurts? Is the offensive line as good? Are they investing there? Can you have A.J. Brown and, and at the peak with whatever that top wide receiver contract that he'll actually deserve and should have gotten paid now? He got, I mean, he got screwed monetarily for the deal that he got compared to everybody else in the market. Well, where it's going to go, yeah. So, yeah, like, he's going to want a new deal in a year or two. Okay, so you're going to have to pay him all that money. What does Devontae Smith look like? Dallas Goddard is getting paid top money as a tight end. Like, you, you can't pay everybody. You're not going to have a defense that averages over two turnovers a game right now, which is ungodly. I mean, it's just all the, all the circumstances for this team right now, and that's why I always talk about talent because the whole roster top to bottom is so stacked everywhere and that benefits Jalen Hurts. Now, he's played amazing, and he deserves to be in the MVP conversation right now. But when he's got to carry a heavier workload, he doesn't always have the pockets. He doesn't always have elite targets to throw to. And, and we said this many times, best set of weapons I've ever seen in my life in this town. Best secondary I've ever seen in my life in this town. You can argue this offensive line against any of the great offensive lines that we've had over the past 20 years. So... Uh, it, it's just stacked everywhere, and it's is a different equation with Jalen at 50. Is he $10 million more valuable than Dak Prescott on a year-to-year -year basis today, right now? I don't know. Uh, is he? Are you willing ten, to take a million? gamble for it? It's he's 10 million 25 more percent more valuable than, than Dak Prescott. Fuck yes, he is, and he's outplaying his ass with those weapons, by the way, and he's got pretty good and weapons, too. line. I, I mean, yeah, a I, shitty I, line. I, I guess, but why is that a knock against Jalen Hurts? This team is always going to invest in the offensive line. Always, they already okay, did. But then they, they, have, they have they have they have Kelsey's replacement ready to go, who played against the Packers for a little bit. You know, like we're starting to see that. There's so, dude, the Saints, and just on this point alone, and then I'm going to let you continue if you have more. But like, you're picking sixth right now, dude. That's either more money for you to recoup or go buy a player if you want to or like you can replace the and by the way because AJ Brown is already paid because Dallas Goddard is already paid and hit the brakes on Devontae Smith being paid honestly I think he's a great player but like let's slow down and let him earn that first like he's nowhere near earning a big time second year contract the market might say that when he gets there anyway but like you don't need to pay him right away and you're going to have to figure that crap out anyway. This team's young, man. It's not old. Like, Jordan Mailata's here. Cam Jurgens is here. I know everybody's yelling at Dickerson from last week, but he's here. Lane Johnson uh, is your next biggest, toughest replacement, and you've got two years to figure that out. You know, like, $50 million now is going to look like Jimmy G's 27 from the, the past couple of years, and he's way better than Jimmy G. He's way better than any type of potential that is going to be there. And he's not done as a passer yet. He's not done progressively getting better. So, like, from that point, I don't understand. That's that's It's always going to be hard when you pay the quarterback. And you might as well try and do it and get ahead of it before it gets out of control. Well, it's, it's going to get worse for sure. And, look, the, the thing that makes it easier, and you mentioned this in the postgame show, if the salary cap goes up as much as we think it will, then if those projections are right, then this is more of a moot point. It is. But if it's if it's going on the same track it's generally been, then 
it's it's a lot of money, and I'm just I, I don't know I, what is it going to look like when he doesn't have supreme talent everywhere. He doesn't have a defense that's turning over the ball all the time. It's just a different equation. He's going to have to win more foot races. Can he do that? That's one of the things that we worry about. Can he pass 45 times a game and put the team on his back with his arm? Uh, I I want to see it. So still. would you? I, I just just being honest, would you sure. be in place of waiting to see what happens again this off season then? Are you saying, you know what, maybe there is a deal that we can negotiate for Bryce Young because we're sitting there at six and granted, like, there's no way you're probably going to get that from Detroit or any of those top teams that are like dying to have that. Um, you know, CJ Stroud could come around in the process, but he hasn't looked overly impressive. But I'm just saying, if there is an opportunity then this offseason, Lamar Jackson being like the rainbow that could possibly happen, are you making a move then? Or you wait, like, are you still in, I'm not sure about Jalen Hurts camp and I'm not doing anything until it's, like, actually 100% proven in front of me? No, it's it's not that I'm not sure about Jalen Hurts. It's to the degree that I'm sure about Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is a starting quarterback in the league. When we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, McLean had the first report. It was, like, $42 mm -hmm. million or something. I was good with that because it's the Dak Prescott contract, and I think that's where he is. Like, you look at other guys. Mahomes is a way better passer. It's not close. Uh, Josh Allen is a much better passer, and I would lean with those guys, and, and it's easier to get away with this stuff because they're great passers. So – until we see him as a dominant passer, it's just it's it's not easy for me to go. Yes, let's pay him like those guys and what their salary is right now. Even if Lamar's going to get more and it's going to be guaranteed, like I, that's a dangerous play too. Because yeah. what's Lamar's problem? Like he mm. he hasn't had a wide receiver this whole time. He just hasn't had one. His best receiver has been Mark Andrews. And I think that's the like we, we discussed it at some point, but that is really the new winning formula for now. If anybody's looking for it, and yes, if he sneezed on Sean McVay, I guess that's still around too. But Good head coach, dominating wide receiver, good to great quarterback or better. You know, like that's basically how you go win one. And that's OK. Like the fact that A.J. Brown and Jalen Hurts will be here theoretically for a very I don't think they're moving anywhere, man. I think those guys are lifers in Philadelphia. So if you can keep rotating, who's the best next target like Dallas is going to be here. for. There's a while to figure it out, man. That's all I'm saying. And you should see. Jalen evolve as a passer over those next two years anyway. I mean, if this was the leap from the big leap from two to three, it's progressively going to get a little better from three to four to five to six to whatever until he turns into Russell Wilson at 33. And then you might have, <laughs> then you might be right, you know? So, um, well, that'll worry me. But the, but the coaching needs to come along with him and they need to get better and give him better opportunities to grow as a passer. So they need to figure it out too. And it's part of belief in them and their ability to continue to grow this guy. And then, yeah, like, I think what we need to accept is if Jalen Hurts is going to get paid $50 million a year, this defense is not going to be nearly as good going forward. So enjoy it while you got it. I mean, you're, well, you're okay investing too. in foot races. I know. I'm Like, it's okay. It's it's a way to build, right? It's just there's different ways to build. You, you save money on the quarterback. You can build a more complete team. That's what San Francisco did. They, pay, they were paying Jimmy G like $27 million a year. That was not bad at all compared to the market. You could have a really good team, and they got to the Super Bowl. They were five minutes away from winning. And they got killed so, for it, too, by the way. They got absolutely crushed once they made that deal. The The second round pick, the signing right away, everybody says, what a fucking joke that was. And then Kirk Cousins gets guaranteed money, and that's a fucking joke. Well, <laughs> dude, Kirk, Kirk Cousins getting guaranteed money, and then doing it again, I think, is a bigger joke that they doubled down on it and did it again with Cousins. But for Jimmy G... That deal made a lot of sense to me, and they got the value. I mean, NFC Championship games, Super Bowls, you got your money's worth with Jimmy G. You, you can't complain with what he did. Everybody would take those results, and it's because of the strategy, right? So yeah. now it's a different strategy, and it's just Jalen Hurts has proven that when he's got the talent around him and it's a well-built team, he can be a, a true winner, and he's one of the best quarterbacks on one of the best teams. He's done that now. So now it's a whole different game. Like this, It goes from easy mode to hard mode now. That's where yeah, it's going to be once Jalen gets paid, and he's, he's got to show me that he's that guy. To me, it's less of a Jalen problem, and that's more or less – and in the good graces, outside of maybe the rookie class, which I do really want to get into at some point because I thought it was a great, great point by you, and we're like, rookie class is kind of okay right now. Um, these guys are stacked, man. I, like, again, endless picks still heading into next year cap room beyond belief and i am having such baby brain right now i can't remember the kid from georgia that i'm absolutely love oh that deep tackle 
yeah, but like yeah, I I don't know. I'll figure it out when it's you, if 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 Nicobe Dean can get to where you want him to be, and I still don't know where that is, honestly. Um, you're you're fixing the defense through, or you're making those powerhouse moves in the draft now, and that's what they've done on offense to basically like we're good, <laughs> and they're using a mix of vets and guys because they know they can go win a Super Bowl. You know, that, you're right. Enjoy this while it lasts because this is this is the the most optimum time for Jalen, this team, and everyone else to go win a Super Bowl because that's been the formula forever. Jalen Carter, thank you very much, Taylor Cardatis. He's not the best fucking producer in Philadelphia for nothing. Uh, if you have that nucleus starting to build itself while this is still young, I mean, like all these guys, A.J. Brown's young. Quez is young. Devontae's young. Everybody's young. So, um for the not for the first time in my lifetime, I feel confident about the Philadelphia Eagles using all of this shit properly. <laughs> and they have like, what can we really say anymore if they develop this kid to where it was, to where it is now? And I'll just reiterate again: we never thought Jalen Hurts was going to go and achieve above his second round pick value and status. Well, Jesus Christ, the Philadelphia Eagles have valued him at $50 million. I think you and I had discussed at one point, what would it say? What would a team absolutely have to offer right now? Three ones as a, as a floor? And it's probably way beyond that at this point now. It's, he is, uh, and what do you, last thing for me, do you take stock into anything that Tom Brady says publicly? Because he was pretty, pretty pretty genuinely on his podcast giving some praise to Jalen Hurts and his ability upstairs. That's all. Okay. Well, yeah, in that case, because I've seen it. And <laughs> Taylor I says seen... he loves crypto, so how, <laughs> how, how much can you really take? Fair point. Yeah, yes. FTX fraud Tom Brady uh, talking about Jalen Hurts. Yeah, so yeah, you worry about that. No, but uh, I mean, a lot of his stuff is bullshit. But yeah, if he's talking about Jalen upstairs, he's right. I mean, we've just seen it everywhere. So for Brady to, to – it, it's just another confirmation of something we already know. But yeah. Yeah, it's like, and I, I hear you too. I mean, look, Howie, I believe in Howie Roseman as much as anybody in the city. I've always been a big Howie guy, and his ability to, yes, what do you mean? What does that look? I'm just side smirking for a second. <laughs> Continue. I'll, I'll I, get to it. <laughs> I've, been a, I've been a big Howie guy for a long time, uh, and I look at what he's done, and, and can he transition this team with a quarterback making that kind of money? I think so. I think so. It's just going to look radically different, and it is harder to win a Super Bowl once you get off that contract of the rookie deal. So especially for a second rounder, I mean, holy shit. This is one of the biggest advantages you can have in history, a guy playing this well as a second rounder. Because, I mean, what he makes a first round pick, usually a quarterback, you're going to get drafted in the top half of the first round. By the time you're in your fourth, fifth deal, uh, fifth year of the deal, you're making what? I mean, six million, eight million. What's Jalen Hurts making? Like a million dollars? I mean, Less seriously. Yeah. You can't be making shit. Like he's he's a second rounder. It's just the nature of the game. So you got to pay him. But man, it's more just, than that it, is what I meant to say. Not less than that. It'd be absurd if he was making. I'll, let me look it up right now. Actually, yeah, I'll look curious. it up. I'd, I'd be curious to see how much Jalen's making on his deal. But you're you're gonna then be getting because you have to think about that, right? You're getting fifty million dollars, and you need to replace that then across the roster. You're shedding that. So like, okay, Darius Slay is getting older as much as he's been great. James Bradbury's not coming back next year. We know that. Chauncey Gardner Johnson. Has led the league in interceptions right now. He's been absolute dynamite. You got to resign that guy. You're probably yeah. So you're going to sign him to a top of the market safety contract. That's what he's worth right now. So okay, now you're going to add that money into the equation. Like there's just there's a lot of things to factor, and you don't have as much room for error. And and that's the thing that you worry about. Like Wentz, they ate a lot of dead money, but they, all the there'd still be eleven million dollars on top of every dead dollar that they had for Carson Wentz, and then you go and build the rest of the team. So. It, it's a lot of money. Yeah, and I'm having uh, um, Spotrex uh, uh, not uh, working it out. But, I mean, we're right. It's a It was a four-year deal for, man, uh, like $8 million total. <laughs> so I'm, I'm seeing base salaries of 1.6, 1. 1.7. So, man, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a crazy. major, 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 major increase in how much money he's making per year, and it affects the rest of the roster. You're not going to have the same depth that you used to. He's going to have to overcome a lot more challenges. He's earned the right to be here. I will say that he's earned the right to be here, but there's, there's still a reason to be nervous about it. What I will say is the Eagles will not make the same mistake twice. They've already been through this, and they've already been through some heavy quarterback drama. He's kind of like the clean slate guy for everybody. They know they know what Vince Quinn is saying 
for sure. It doesn't mean they can't fuck it up and Vince can be right. <laughs> I just feel uber confident that they're not going to be like, okay, this is what got us last time. Let's not do that. And they're kind of preemptively doing that, I think, already. Um, and they're just ahead uh, in terms of draft and everything else here. So, Vince Quinn, any, any other final things before we uh, ship on out of here and uh, get ready for the Titans on Thursday? No, sign Malcolm. Let's all celebrate Super Bowl number two incoming. <laughs> there it is. Uh, we'll see you guys. Uh, join us in the Discord as always. Bellandthebirdmen.com, liquiddeath.com slash bell. phillysportstrips.com slash bell. If you want to join us in New York or in Chicago on the tailgates. And, of course, as always, Taylor Cordatus, who does a superb job, cameraless. Uh, that is Vince Quinn looking beautiful. John Barchard here at the house, hanging out in, uh, well, I guess, Carson Woods or Carson Wentz's uh, backyard or something like that. I don't know where I'm at, but appreciate you listening and watching. We'll see you on Thursday. Bye-bye. <laughs>